Hi, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. It's been a week now since the 3090 has launched and the reviews are in and they show somewhat underwhelming performance for the 3090. And since then, I've had a lot of questions why, in my mind, uh, the 3090 turned out the way it did. So in this video, I want to try and answer some of those questions. And if you have any thoughts of your own, make sure to comment down below to keep the discussion going. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. Question 1. Did the 3090 underperform? When the specs were revealed, the 3090 had 20% more CUDA cores than the 3080, and it was expected that this would translate to 20% more performance. But when the reviews came out, the Founders Edition, along with other base level cards, seemed to only be 10% faster. Why did Nvidia do this? Well, the short answer is that the 3080 has a TDP of 320 watts, and the 3090, at least for the Founders Edition and other reference cards, had a TDP of 350 watts. The extra 30 watts translated into 10% more power and 10% more performance. It wasn't that the 3080 had too high a power draw, it was that the 3090 didn't have enough. And this is where the AIB partner boards delivered. The Asus Strix 3090 actually has a TDP of 390 watts, and from Tech Power Up's review, it produces 19% more performance than the 3080. So why didn't Nvidia just offer 390 watts for their Founders Edition? It just seems a bizarre choice to design a $1,499 card that's 10% better than the $699 card. And while the 3090 also offers other types of value, like the 24GB of memory and higher memory bandwidth, in general it seems pretty frugal from Nvidia. Is this so Nvidia could raise their prices yet again with the AIB partners, with the Asus Strix MSRP of $1,799? That means an increase of $300. One would have to think Nvidia gets a cut of this higher price sale in some way, either through the sale of a higher bin chip or some clause within their sale contract. And as you can see with Tech Power Up's review, 390 watts is really the point of minimal returns. The Asus Strix was able to draw 480 watts of power when overclocked, but that resulted only in 2% more performance. If Nvidia had given the reference card 390 watts, then the AIB partners would have found it much harder to differentiate their products if they all produced the same result. Question 2. Why is the power consumption so high? Why is this card consuming 350 watts to 390 watts of juice from the wall? And I think I want to start with my conclusion first, and that is I don't think Ampere, which is aptly named by the way, was meant to be manufactured by Samsung. On TSMC 7 nanometer, this 628mm2 die would have required around 250 watts to 280 watts power consumption. For example, just look at the leaks for Big Navi. That's what Ampere would have achieved on TSMC 7 nanometer. But it appears that on the Samsung Fab, these GPUs require an extra 50 watts of power to get the same performance as on TSMC 7 nanometer. And one of the reasons is that this Samsung 8 nanometer node isn't really 8 nanometers. It's a derivative of the Samsung 10 nanometer node, which, given the approximate transistor density, is only a half step between TSMC's 12 nanometer and 7 nanometer. On the other hand, WCCF Tech did show that the RTX 3080 undervolted pretty well with a massive 25% decrease in power draw, but only 2% less performance in Forza Horizon 4. They only tested one game, so more testing really needs to be done to show if this theory holds up, but I suspect that undervolting results will vary quite a bit, which is why the 3090 and the 3080 draw so much power. Nvidia really needed to show maximum performance in benchmarks and results, because they knew AMD would most likely come out with something compelling on TSMC 7 nanometer. Question 3. What was up with the marketing? 8K, 36 teraflops. 1.9 times performance per watt. If you thought Nvidia had exaggerated during its presentations in the past, then Ampere took it to a whole new level. And if you're also wondering why you couldn't make sense of a lot of the numbers, that's because let's face it, Nvidia didn't want you to look terribly hard at them. Take the 36 shaded teraflops. Wait a minute, you're telling me it's 2.7 times faster than the 2080 Ti which had 13.4 teraflops? I mean, if that was the case, wouldn't you just show two games running side by side and prove it? And why did the 2080 Ti 
have 4,352 CUDA cores and the 3090 have 10,496 CUDA cores. It seems like an attempt to inflate performance and add ambiguity. What actually happened was a change in architecture where the data path in Turing performed integer calculations only. Now in Ampere, it performed either floating point 32 or integer calculations, which theoretically meant shaded teraflops doubled. In reality though, that shared data path means there's always some integer calculations, which on average is about 25% of the time, so it'll never reach the full 36 shaded teraflops. Shady tactics? I think so. Another obfuscating moment was when Nvidia brought out this performance per watt chart, which was really a rather confusing chart that barely provided any transparency. The chart showed a 1.9 performance per watt improvement from Ampere over Turing, but looking at any review will tell you this actual moment is just about non-existent. Is anyone playing control at 60 frames per second at 120 watts on a 3080? What resolution is the game running at? The only way this could happen would be if the game was running at a lower than 4K resolution because the 3080 at 4K runs at 320 watts. The fact is if you look at a performance per watt chart, the 3080 is only 16% better than the 2080 Ti and 20% better than the 2080, not 1.9 times. And I'm not even going to comment on 8K because I know most of you know that this was not really a possibility unless the LSS was turned on or select games were used for comparison. All in all, the marketing was totally perplexing. It seemed because they had a product with mediocre performance that they ramped up the hyperbole in the hope that enthusiast fans would buy them based on Nvidia's track record. Question 4. Why was the 3090 so expensive? And that brings me to my final point. Why was it so expensive? I like to think of the price as a combination of what consumers would like to pay for a product and also the demand and supply of the product. Nvidia surely has market data on how much consumers would pay for a top tier GPU. And I think the recent mining booms showed Nvidia just how much gamers were willing to pay for GPUs when they were scarce. Secondly, I speculated before that Nvidia changed their minds about TSMC and decided that Ampere would be on Samsung 8 nanometers, which possibly left them running late. AIBs have reported they were pretty rushed for this launch, and if that's the case, there's probably not as much stock as expected. With the fever pitch hype and low supply, Nvidia absolutely knew they could sell the highest tiered model for way more than the 3080. The thing with the highest tiered model is that they generally seem review proof and price ceiling proof anyway. The 3090 was a bit of a weird product where it encountered a lot of problems along the way. The 3080 eats into a lot of the performance gains of the 3090 because Nvidia had to make sure that the 3080 was going to beat whatever AMD was going to come up with this generation. But Nvidia also snubbed TSMC and any performance gains it could have gotten from the superior node. That meant a weaker product at the highest level and in an attempt to deflect on the actual performance, Nvidia opted to sell gamers on a bunch of hype. The price and supply of the RTX 3090 ultimately means that gamers have to hunt one down if they really want one, which in hindsight is probably a good thing. In the end, I think people are going to look back at the 3090 and see that it was a bit of a weird product and that it has less appeal than the RTX 2080 Ti. Alright, that's it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button if you like this video and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.